Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, make sure you check us out on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash hookah anonymous underscore. You guys been telling us to create one for the longest, so we recently created a community where we will upload videos that we can't share on YouTube due to their guidelines, but we'll also be dropping the latest to their first behind the scenes information that you wouldn't find anywhere else on our socials. So make sure you become a member, and after you do that, head over to our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore and follow us there. Now without further ado, let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now. During Father's Day weekend, Chicago was turned into something that was straight out of a movie. While everyone was celebrating Father's Day, where it was supposed to be a time of tranquility and appreciating having a father in your life, sons and a daughter had to experience losing their father on Father's Day. This would be a time they would never forget, but for all the wrong reasons. Unfortunately, it was a time that many wouldn't forget because over the weekend, Chicago reported 72 people shot in just 72 hours. With the youngest victim being as young as 13 years old, ABC Chicago reported nine of the 72 victims lost their lives over the weekend. The 13-year-old boy was standing on the sidewalk in the 1300 block of South Independence Boulevard just before 8.30 p.m. when he was shot in his head. He was taken to Stroger Hospital where he passed away due to his injury. Out of the 72 people, at least two dozen of those were shot during a five-hour period from 12 a.m. midnight to 5 a.m. Monday morning. All that tells us is that being able to hang out late night in Chicago is a no-no if you want to prevent yourself from being a target. In one incident on the south side of Chicago, in the Bronzeville neighborhood located in the 4500 block of South Evans Avenues, just before 12.30 a.m., a 35-year-old man was shot in the head where he was transported to the University of Chicago Medical Center where he was immediately pronounced deceased. That was just on Father's Day weekend. The madness still haven't stopped because just yesterday, June 18, 2024, a seven-year-old boy was shot and unalive walking out of his home around 3 p.m. in the 2300 block of West Jackson Boulevard. He was struck by a stray bullet in his chest by an assault-styled rifle. Although he was rushed to the hospital, he was ultimately pronounced deceased. I think it's safe to say although summer isn't officially here yet, with everything leading up to it, it's going to be a crazy summer in Chicago. To hear that a seven-year-old isn't even safe to walk out of his own home isn't normal. Now in the midst of all this madness, we're here to talk about an upcoming rapper from Chicago who was celebrating Father's Day weekend with his children, but tragically lost his life in the process. A man by the name of A. Hunter Stacks would be the victim out of the 72 people that were shot within the 72 hours. According to news reports, A. Hunter Stacks was standing on the sidewalk in the 1500 block of South LaSalle Street at 3.17 p.m. talking to an older man that was 59 years old. That's when a suspect approached the two men and just started shooting. The 34-year-old suspect that was identified as A. Hunter Stacks was shot multiple times in the torso. He was taken to Advocate Christ Medical Center where he was pronounced deceased. The 59-year-old man was also shot multiple times and was taken to the same medical center where he was listed in serious condition, but he's still alive. Now, despite reports saying that A. Hunter Stacks was unalived in front of his son, my guess is due to the age difference and it being Father's Day, maybe A. Hunter was chilling with an uncle or something when the shots rang off and both of them would end up getting shot, but unfortunately, A. Hunter wouldn't survive the attack. And when it comes to his son witnessing what happened, I'm not sure, maybe his son was somewhere in the area or something, but the news didn't say that he was shot and unalived in front of his son. Um, it still isn't confirmed who the 59 year old man was because the news didn't specify and at first I thought it was his father until I realized via Facebook that his father had actually passed away as well. Now after the news would break about A-Hunter's passing, his family would take to Facebook to respond to the situation and express their concerns. And before we get into that, let me say one thing. Many people are acting surprised about an event like this taking place on Father's Day just because it's Father's Day. But what you have to remember is this. It's no telling what was done in the street and what made his ops want to catch him the way they did. However, they don't care. 
Some of these guys do crimes and catch bodies on a Sunday. So what makes you think that they care about it being Father's Day? They don't care. In fact, they're thinking this will be a perfect time for you to strike because you know that more than likely guys will be lacking because they aren't thinking anybody is trying to spend on Father's Day. So psychologically, it is the best time to catch your op off guard. And also, like I stated previously, it's no telling what pain Ahan himself inflicted out there to make these guys want to get them so bad. And one of the reasons I say that is due to what a friend of the family posted to their Facebook account that kind of hinted towards A. Hunter himself not being too innocent. So once again, these guys know what they're into and know what comes with the streets. You live by that weapon, and majority of the time, you die by it. Now with that being said, let's get into what a cousin of A. Hunter Stacks had to say as they would take to their Facebook and she would say, quote, Yesterday when I got that call, I didn't know what to think or do. I was at a loss for words, but just last year, I was at the rehab seeing you almost every week when you got shot. Now around the same time, this ish happened again. Cousin, you really snapped with this one. You had people that really loved you. What about your kids? You ain't deserve that. I don't care how you live your life in the streets. You ain't deserve this and I said what I said. Come turn up another club, praying for the whole Smith and Smothers family. Love y'all. Then the man who identifies himself as A. Hunter's older brother will also express his feelings via Facebook as he would say, quote, they took my little brother, y'all. This it should never be okay. My father's day went from the best to the worst. I'm talking about my day one going, y'all. I can't even understand this. I can't wrap my mind around this. And to his kids, I love y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I promise Uncle Greedy got y'all for life. And to mama, I love y'all. I'm praying for all of us. This is another devastating loss. I love you, brother. I don't know why this happened to you, but I'm so sorry it did, brother. My heart can't take no more. Now, for y'all that don't know, around the same time last year on June 10th, 2023, A. Hunter was targeted then as he was shot at a funeral procession in Oak Park and almost lost his life. Police reports say that Saturday afternoon in the village of Oak Park, a line of vehicles were traveling from Chicago to a cemetery in Des Plaines when a white pickup truck pulled up alongside one of the procession's vehicles and opened fire, striking two passengers, including A. Hunter. A. Hunter was listed in critical but stable condition, while the second victim was listed in critical condition. Four people were shot in total because two others were shot in another vehicle, but they had non-life-threatening injuries. The funeral was being held for a guy by the name of Jamal Goins, who was shot and unalived on May 23, 2023 in Edgewater. He would be shot in the 5900 block of Winthrop when police would find him in the alley laying lifeless. Now, when it comes to A. Hunter, it's pretty obvious that somebody wanted him badly for whatever reason. Anybody that's willing to target you during another funeral sounds like the intention stems from something personal. So when people say, how can they do something like this on Father's Day? Well, we don't know if it was the same suspects because they were never caught. But if they're willing to shoot during a funeral procession, then Father's Day is just another day to them. And unfortunately, this time when they attack, a. Hunter actually succumbed to his injuries. Now, we don't know what type of life he lived in the streets and who he did whatever to, but judging from Facebook posts from friends and family members, A. Hunter was a great father. In fact, he had just recently celebrated two of his kids' graduations as his daughter just graduated eighth grade on June 3rd and his son just graduated kindergarten. Not only was he a good father to four kids in total, which was three boys and one girl, A. Hunter had three baby mothers had he got along with good and was no stranger of displaying them all getting along and seeming to have a polygamous relationship amongst them. So with all that being said, can you imagine just celebrating a child's graduation to losing a father or your child's father just a week and a half later on Father's Day? Crazy. Now once again, we know A. Hunter isn't a saint and I believe anything you reap, you shall sow. However, anytime someone loses their life, it's unfortunate, period. For not only him, but for the people that surround him, whether they're loved ones, family, friends, it impacts everybody in a different way. So my condolences to his kids and family, and rest in peace to A. Hunter. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'ma keep on dropping. I'm out.